Today's Ask Reddit post. What is your I was into X before it was cool thing? Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Let's get started. Swine flu. I got it in February 2008 and was the third reported case worldwide. You and the person who got corona should become friends. And share a case of corona beer with some bacon. I named my cat Corona. Because that was the only box we had to carry her home in. I thought it was an adorable name. Three years later. And that name has aged phenomenally. I have a buddy who named his dog Zika. You all should get together. Snowboarding. You couldn't even bring them to resorts. 1983. This is before it was too hot. Hulu in 2008. It used to be completely free. Browser based. With no ads. It was the only way for me to watch new episodes of Heroes every week. I first saw The Simpsons when it was a sketch on the Tracy Ullman show. And thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I was ecstatic when I learned they were making a full cartoon of it. I watched it religiously up until about season 15 or 16 before I finally switched to every once in a while like we all eventually did. I feel you. The love is there. But it had to evolve. They used to be with it. But then they changed what it was. Now what they're with isn't it anymore and what's it seems weird and scary. It'll happen to you. Grandpa Simpson. Does you Mr. team know you are on their account? What are you cackling at? Fatty? Too much pie. That's your problem. But there's something we don't know grandpa. How do you take off your underwear without taking off your pants? Don't want to brag but I bought some N95 masks the second week of January. Someone had a big brain moment. I thought it was a big brain thing to do when I bought like 30 of them for a big group of friends and I who were going to a summer festival together. When the entire west coast US was on fire the summer of 2018. Causing a lot of smoke problem for some festival campgrounds. Anyway nobody ended up using a single one cause we were all busy getting drunk and doing drug and being degenerates. Then covid hit and I had my galaxy brain moment when the N95 masks were being sold at like $7.10 a unit. My mum keeps a whole bunch of them since mid 2010s cause she worked in China for a while. She's happily trudging through her stockpile. I was out for the night back when I was 17, 18, 19. A friend and I went to a good pub in Oxfordshire where we thought we'd have a chance to pick up some girls. Ended up getting drunk. Taking an E and listening to the band who were pretty good. After their set we popped out of the pub for a quick joint. The band walked over and asked for a toke. Ended up spending the rest of the evening in the back of their van smoking weed and drinking. Turned out that the band was an unknown indie rock group called Radiohead. A couple of weeks later Creep went international. Been a fan ever since. Edited to correct some piss poor spelling. Edited again. Wow. Never thought this would blow up anywhere near this much. Thank you to the generous people who have given me awards. Especially the gold one. Dude that's sick af. And being a Radiohead fan before it was cool is like hipster 3. That's like hipster royalty. Sent an electronic mail message from my car using a HP 48G calculator and a ham radio in 1993. That featuring gets published in a technical magazine. Nothing about that first sentence sounds cool, but I know the G is for gangster. Edit. Thanks for all the love, upvotes, and awards. To answer the common questions, I wrote a terminal emulator for the 48G. That talked to a terminal node controller which is like a modem to interface between the calculator and radio. The message. Don't remember the exact details but I was 16 so it probably went to my mom's prodigy account to say hi mom. Went through the ham radio packet network until it hit a node with an internet bridge. The car was my Pose 88 Mustang that I bought for $1800. Lastly, the source for G is for gangster as it relates to HP 48G comes from the incredible nerd rap entertainment system album by YT Cracker. Home computing. I started in 1976. Had Tesla stock at $28. Saw an article about it with a starting price of $10. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. 
I worked for a movie theater chain in 1996, and my boss got a VHS copy of Jesus vs. Santa Claus at some industry event. We watched that video a dozen times and laughed our asses off. About 6 months later South Park debuted on Comedy Central and we were very excited to see it had been picked up. Oh man. Just made me realize I'm getting old. I know. I remember when it came out. I was a teenager. I was sleeping with my ex long before everyone started doing it. Nice. I was into memes when they were called demotivational posters. I came across the Lonely Islands website when I was about 11 or 12. 0203, before Andy Samberg or the other two Akiva and Jorma, were big. They had a video where they spliced all these old NES games together into a skit and it was friggin hilarious. I never realized that video was them. I love that video. Thank you. I got Instagram when it was a photography app back in 2011. Same. I remember asking my friend how she got her photos to look so cool. That's when I discovered filters. Those were simpler times. When IG was more fun, personal and not filled with advertisements. Before Facebook bought it, the Zuck ruins everything he touches. Even Hawaii. The How to Train Your Dragon books. Unfortunately they're still not cool yet. There's books. 12 of them. Be prepared. They are very different. They're also very very good. I enjoy the books more for what it's worth. I care like the only things that are the same is the names. Time place. And that there are dragons. Time isn't even the same. The movies are about Hiccup I and the books are Hiccup the 3 or IV. Gmail. 2004 ish. When it was invite only. My friend had a small amount of invites. And the counter for free storage space would keep going up. I forgot about that. Hating Bill Cosby. Had to do volunteer work at the local Jello O Museum for 30 hours to graduate high school in 2008. He used to be the spokesperson for Jello. I had to listen to him talk about Jello in old commercials for 30 hours on a loop. Edit. I should also mention it's the town where a bunch of kids acquired a mass conversion disorder and all thought they had to rate ETEs. I actually have mild to rate ETEs. So that's another thing I did before it was cool. The local Jello Museum. That is a fascinating string of words right there. Yeah, it was invented in my hometown. I'm not proud of it or anything. I think the forced volunteerism is the weird part. It seems like something the Sweetums family would do on Parks and Rec. Your grades have been exemplary this semester. Signage 1. But unfortunately you're missing your 30 hour Jello internship. This town was built on Jello and by god you'll do your part to spread its history or we'll have to hold your diploma. Bitcoin. Old coins didn't exist when I got started with it. Mandatory disclaimer. No I'm not a millionaire now. I kick myself over bitcoin all the time. I had a few hundred bitcoins when they were hardly worth anything. I bought a pizza and some PC parts and stopped mining. I remember when people used to tip bitcoins on reddit. Like a cheaper alternative to gold. I'm sure I've got a few attached to old reddit accounts that'll now be forever lost in the void. Ha. That reminds me that I should have gotten a few tips myself on this account. I've ignored them back then. Would it be possible to retrieve them now? I had covered 19 before the world went insane over it. I watched Avatar, The Last Airbender when it was running live as an adult and people gave me shit for watching a children's cartoon. Edit. Since this comment is receiving a lot of attention, I want to talk about Lake Leoge. The term Leoge comes from Leo Dongezeo, which translates into reform through labor, where actual Chinese forced labor prison camps. Anyone who was seen as a counter-revolutionist by the Chinese Communist Party were sent to Leoge where they are forced to produce goods that get exported to the west with all the profit going to the state. The camps also served to reform political and ideological thoughts of prisoners to line with the Communist Party's ideology. While the camps are no longer called Leoge, they still exist as prisons today. People are dumb. 
A classic case of judging a book by its cover. People sure do love to judge though. I was in marching band with Mark Aplier. He was my trumpet section section leader. It's weird seeing all these memes and all these famous people talking about a guy I was in high school with. Were you there when he messed up his solo in a full stadium? Listening to Nirvana's blue song on student radio, NZ, in 1989 and thinking these guys are good. My favorite Nirvana song. I had a friend in high school ask me in math class one day if I wanted to go to a concert with her that night. Her sister had extra tickets and she thought I'd want to go. It was a new kids on the block comeback tour and I said sure why not. My mom didn't mind me going. We sat around chatting before the show and the opening act was some woman who appeared to be drunk but her music was really good. Nobody had ever heard of her and she only did a few songs but her music was a total earworm that was hard to get rid of once it took hold. Went home that night and googled her single Just Dance and downloaded it immediately. And that's how I discovered Lady Gaga. I discovered her in a music blog. Liked her songs and followed her on Twitter. She followed me back for no reason. She stills follows me. Haha <laughs> that's what happened with Elohim for me. I found her with Spotify. Tweeted at her. And she followed me. That was nice. I know she's not a big artist. But I'm a huge fan of her. I saw Dave Giles in concert and followed him on Facebook. He follows me back and wishes me a happy birthday now. I think it's absolutely adorable. If you haven't heard of him I would recommend checking him out if you have time. Elmo when he was just a minor Sesame Street character. We used to watch Sesame Street at my shared house full of college kids. Was a weighty unwind. Sounds silly but it was a thing. I liked Elmo. He was pretty chill. Was there marijuana involved? I used to swear by smoking weed then watching the Smurfs until I passed out. Here to represent the magic school bus instead of Smurfs. Respect though. When I was 4. I got inside our new refrigerator before they plugged it in. I was in there before it was cool. Our technical is the truth. I probably had one of the first top 10 channels back in 2011 where I would post top 10 video stuff about games. I gave up cause it was too much editing and work. But few years later those top 10 channels became very popular. Now those top 10 channels are memes. I actually enjoyed watching them but now there's like thousands of top 10s that are either just clickbait or stale content. Number 15. Burger King Foe. Hot lettuce. The last thing you want in your Burger King burger is somebody's foot lettuce. Boo. We weren't allowed to have cola much growing up but we drank a ton of seltzer water. I kept drinking it as an adult and people made fun of me for how weird it was because it's not a thing people casually drank. They thought it was either a mixer, like they acted as if I was drinking straight margarita mix, or something from a Frau Frau health store. Then Ducking Lacroix came along, or whatever it was that made seltzer suddenly cool a few years ago. I mean I'm glad it's even more common with more flavors and stuff but I used to get teased so much for it. I am originally from Europe, where sparkling water is common and the norm. Kept drinking it after I moved to the US. Tried to introduce friends to it in junior high school and they all thought it was weird and tasted funny. Now it's everywhere and I'm so happy. I don't have to go to little European speciality shops or settle for club soda anymore. Same exact thing happened with Nutella. In Europe. Kids aren't raised on PB and J. But on Nutella. New Americans who refuse to even try it. Now it's huge. I'm Canadian and was raised on Nutella. Nutella and rye was my go to breakfast with a tall glass of milk. Xbox Live. I was in the beta. It came on a CD that you had to install on your OG Xbox. Halo CE on XB Connect was where the real action was. Though, I remember having DDR Ultra Mix for my Xbox and being able to download new songs from the internet. I was so excited. I also loved that I could upload my CDs and use them as the radio station when I played Project Gotham Racing. Drinking Baileys from a shoe. Can you invite me to a club where people wee on each other? Hell yeah Mathalika. I read Fight Club because it was featured prominently in Borders. At the time, 
No one had heard of it or its amazing author. Dang I miss bookstores that really were bookstores. Not gift shops with a few recent biographies also for sale. I think you're just going to gift shops my dude. Bookstores still exist. Since my dad is a huge weeb, we bought a pack of 500 black medical masks because we saw people in Japan using it for sickness allergies normally. A year later pandemic. Being a degenerate weeb pays off my dudes. Bonus story. Once I wore one of these masks to school and the principal confiscated it because it was distracting even though I had a mild cough and sore throat. I bet you feel really stupid right now. Mr. Malava. It honestly confuses me why wearing a mask when you have a sickness related to coughing is so normalized in most Asian countries but basically never happens anywhere else. If you use common sense that seems like the best way to make sure you don't spread your cold by putting your mouth to your elbow too late. This is totally anecdotal. But as someone who currently is and has been living in Japan for the last year and a half, people wear mask not if they're sick, but if they have allergies. Or even if it's the time of year where someone else could be sick. It's just taken as a general standard that you wear a mask in order to prevent the spread of disease. Whether it's you who's coughing, or you who's preventing yourself from being coughed on, it's honestly such a simple process that I'm amazed, much like you are, that the rest of the world seems to ignore it. With that in mind, it's also amazing the number of people who pull down their mask in order to cough so that they don't get their own spit stuck to their face. I used to record myself playing video games when I was like 5 or 6 when my parents gave me the VCR they replaced in the living room. Because of this early hobby, me and a friend did video game playthroughs on YouTube in 2007. We were certainly not the first but we were damn early. We also used a cap card straight out of the gate rather than doing the old recording the screen crap that looked terrible. Not the same but my grandmother taped everything. She would tape 3-4 different soap operas on separate TVs. Then she had a lineup of literally hundreds of tapes she would watch in order. She would tape over them over and over until they didn't work anymore. She taped things like American Idol 2 I think. She liked it because she didn't have to choose one soap over another, and she could fast forward commercials. My grandma invented binge watching. Reddit. This account is rather recent but I discovered the platform in its infancy. It had less stuff back then but the discussions were better. And then, mainstream caught up. Man I'm in the same boat and I've been missing the good old days a lot lately. I remember when my internet was slow if just going on RS credit and R today I learned for hours cause they'd load faster lol. Remember stumble upon? They allowed all users to download their bookmarks before they shut down. Sadly, I didn't know about it and lost all my bookmarks. Every now and then, someone will bring up stumble open and get me depressed. I saved so many bookmarks with the intention of returning to read through them all when I had the time. That never happened. I was into vinyl before it made a comeback, and since nobody in the 90s or early 2000s wanted their records anymore, I basically got 500 plus records for free or nearly free. 2001 was when I started collecting. Garage sales were a gold mine back then. I paid 50 cents for an original pressing of Gish. One of my brothers graduated HS in 1994, and one of his friends moved out to CA from NH. When he came back to visit he brought a cassette tape of early Sublime. Two three years later they got big. Five six years later everyone in junior high had that sun shirt and were trying to say that they discovered the best band ever. A similar thing happened years later with the Dropkick Murphys. But I'm not really into them so I don't mind letting that one go. This. I too was introduced to Sublime with a bootleg cassette. We played the shit out of that tape and searched record stores for months until we finally found a legit CD of 40 ounces to freedom. The first time I saw them live at a small theater, maybe 1994, comma, Eric broke a bass string. And so Bradley was just filling time on the mic while Eric changed strings and told a very sexist joke. The two girls I was with walked out of the show because they were offended. I guarantee those two girls still tell people all about the time they saw Sublime before they were cool and how much they were into them. Seeing a therapist regularly. Being open about mental health. 
I started watching Smosh videos when they had just a couple of them uploaded. They were probably the first Youtubers I watched religiously. Their first food battle videos were hilarious. There was nothing like good old Smosh. Was Smosh the one where they did a Pokemon theme song? That was probably the first YouTube video I ever saw in my life haha. <laughs> yep. That and how to be a ninja by Nagahiga was how I started YouTube. Good times. Bro, you actually watched the whole video. I'd give you a high five if I was a human. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more great content. See you next time.